Okay, actually, let's turn the lights up. Yeah, great, thanks. All right, so uh, as you said, I'm going to give a very brief overview of space plasma physics at Rice. Um, so first question you might have is, what is space plasma physics? And I guess in a one sentence answer, you could say it's a study of plasmas in the solar system, and in particular, since most of them have magnetic fields associated with them, okay. um, magnetized plasmas. And I, I, as you probably know, plasmas are basically ionized gases, um, usually fairly hot, but sometimes out in space, relatively cold. I mean, hot and cold are relative terms. But the, the important point is that they're ionized particles, charged particles, and they respond very sensitively to electric and magnetic fields. So this includes, for example, um, the charged particles uh, in plasma physics of the sun and the, the solar wind that comes off from the sun. And then um, out through the solar system, the interaction of that solar wind with um, either unmagnetized objects, such as Venus and Mars, or comets, for example. And then, and here's where we spend a lot of time uh, studying these objects in the department, magnetized planets. Um, all of these planets have their own magnetic fields, and there's a very interesting and complicated interaction between the solar wind plasma and the, uh, the magnetic fields and electric fields and plasmas of these planets, especially Earth. Okay. So, I've got a uh, slightly cheesy animation from NASA here that shows um, it shows the sun here, and 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 what you'll see shortly is a huge explosion on the sun, okay, it's called a coronal mass ejection. Um, the, there we go. And so it, it sends us some um, plasma uh, off towards the Earth. This is actually a, a billion tons of matter moving at about a million miles an hour, which is fairly impressive, I think. When it impinges on the magnetic field of the Earth, um, you know, the, it, 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 it can deform the magnetic field of the Earth. It forms this comet-shaped um, kind of cavity in the, in, the, in the solar wind called the magnetosphere. And you get some interesting sort of energetic particle effects like the aurora on the Earth. Okay, so that's just kind of a quick movie to, to show you how, you know, um, events on the sun can, can um, uh, have uh, electrodynamic effects. <coughs> Uh, in the near Earth space environment and, and even on the Earth. So, um, okay, so why study these things? I, I, I guess I'd say, and I think this is true for most of the people in the department that study these things, first and foremost, that we just, they're just very interesting and there's some very interesting science questions. And I've chosen just a few here. Uh, it's still a major unsolved problem why the solar corona, which is basically the, the sort of solar atmosphere, is heated to such high temperatures. Okay, it's, it's many millions of degrees higher than the surface of the sun, and that's still a mystery. Okay, and there's a lot of ideas about that we don't kind of go into, but it's still a very interesting question. This question of how the solar wind interacts with the planetary magnetospheres is, is a, as stated here, is a very general question. There's a lot of more specific, detailed questions, but you know, you've got this 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 complex interaction between a magnetized flowing supersonic plasma and super well, yeah, supersonic plasma, and, um, you know, that deforms this, the magnetic field around the planet and moves plasma around, energizes particles. There's a lot of interesting and fun things going on. One of the questions I'm especially interested in is um, what generates relativistic electrons near Earth, okay? Most of the plasma is, is like I said, relatively cold, but you know, if you put a spacecraft out there, you suddenly find that there are electrons moving at almost the speed of light, right? So as scientists, we wonder well, where the heck did they come from? And, and when you measure their fluxes, are surprisingly high, okay? So, you know, it's, 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 it's again, I think just a really interesting science question. Now these are, um, you know, as I've hinted, very complex uh, uh, problems that are they're, they're coupled non-linear systems. And we use a variety of um, methods in the department to study them from basic theory, um, you know, which I, I, for example, I do a lot of just sort of pencil and paper calculations, trying to reduce complicated equations to something we can solve, something that, you know, extracts the essence of the problem, if you like. Um, we also do some very, uh, some large-scale numerical simulations using a variety of either magnetohydrodynamic or kinetic theory models of the plasma. That's a big effort in the department. And just to keep in touch with reality, 
um, you know, uh, it, it, the even the theory and simulation people, you know, are in touch with people who do spacecraft analysis, and there's a few people in the department who work, work directly with measurements from spacecraft, okay. And apart from those sort of basic science uh, issues, there, there's some practical applications. These, these uh, relativistic electrons can damage uh, electronics in spacecraft, for example, and some lower energy particles can cause uh, charging on the spacecrafts, and if you get uh, an electric discharge at the wrong time on a spacecraft, uh, as you can imagine, it can be very bad for, for the spacecraft um, if it happens at the wrong time. 